there it went. <laughs> uh, it's a chilly morning in the mountains of Appalachia and Matt and I have come out to do a dreaded chore which is to clean out the greenhouse and uh, Matt just went in with a trash bag to pick up some stuff and a bird flew right over his head and come out. I wonder, it's not, I don't think it's building a nest in there. We shut the door every night so I don't, it must just got in there and decided to look around and uh, now decided it better get out. So that's one of the things we're going to do today, get some fresh air and piddle about the yard. There's really nothing much in the gardening part that we can do. There is still a lot of stuff though that needs to be cleaned up so we'll be working on that. I've got flowers that need to be cut back and it's still way too early of course. This is December. We won't do like our blueberries and blackberries and our apples and our grapevines and all that. We won't do that just yet. But there's still a lot to do. Mostly though the, the dread is the greenhouse. Every year we say that we're not going to let it get overgrown. We only use the greenhouse in the spring of the year mostly to, we store things in it, but we use it to start our tomatoes and peppers and different things, whatever we want to start as far as seeds go. And then as the summer goes on, we just forget about it. Well, what happens, we don't have, we need to put like a weed burial or barrier on the ground and we, we've never done that. So weeds grow in there in that warm tropical uh, moisture laden place and they just take over and Matt weed eats in there but this summer the last time or two that he was going to weed eat I was like it's just so hot and once you get in there you're so closed up that I, I told him I didn't want him to do it or I convinced him not to and then we kind of forgot about it so then it's, it's so there's lots of weeds that need to be pulled up and then during the business of busyness of the garden we often just put stuff in there uh, ends up if we've got where we've unloaded chicken feed. We put those bags in there. There's, of course, pots and all those things that we start the seedlings in. We put those in there and just kind of throw them down. So then it's always a process to go through all that and clean it up. You'd think after all these years we'd learn to clean as we go, but we've not quite mastered that yet. So it feels so good to get this chore done. Every day when I'd come out to do the chickens or come by the greenhouse, I'd feel guilty because it was such a wreck and such a mess and, and we didn't take care of it like we should have last summer, which is typical. It's typically what we do. We, we walk away from it and leave it like it, um, like it doesn't matter anymore. When it does, when you start thinking about the time of the year that you want to start starting your seeds, the tomatoes and the peppers and all those kind of things. So I'm so glad that we got it cleaned out and we found a whole lot of junk that we're going to get rid of. So with that extra room, I got Matt to help me and we carried in all of my containers, my grow bags full of kale that the deer have eaten. So we've never tried to grow in here during the winter time for a couple of reasons. One, the main one is things like kale and the things that we would grow during the cold uh, winter months. They do well outside because this is the first time the deer have ever eaten them, so we've never run into that problem before. And then also during the because we're on the north side of the mountain, this greenhouse doesn't get as much sunshine in the winter time as it does in the summertime. So it's kind of you know, we've just never tried it. We've never been set up to where we could really try it. And the greenhouse is not heated. That's another thing. So, but Matt said, I said, oh, let's don't fool with it. But he said, well, why not? Let's try it. Let's put them in there and see what happens. So we've carried them all in here. They're right here uh, below me. And we'll see. We'll see if any new growth comes out on them where they've been eaten back. I've convinced Matt to help me do one more thing before we go in. I told him I'd make him some hot chocolate and we could sit by the fire. This is just a little small flower bed right here that's right under my kitchen window and I've not cleaned it out yet. Uh, you can kind of see still all the all the flowers left from this year. Some of the zenas. This is a zena. So some of them I'll probably just do this and, and hope that some of them come back up next year. While we were cleaning out, I was trying to, any kind of seeds we found, I just try to scatter them around. That was a Zena too. I found some poppy seeds, and then I found this is a poppy. You can see it's still green. 
still coming out. So hopefully the poppies that I had in here last year, and they were the ones that in the middle of the winter I just brought out and threw down. Hopefully they will have, uh, hopefully that poppy spread its seeds. Here's another, not sure what that one was. Might have been a Xena. I'll throw those down too. Another thing I found in this bed, I'll show you, is this. Some really colorful rocks. Well, glass pieces. That's glass. That's a rock. So I did not put them here. So, Matt, I give you one guess. Who do you think put them here? Your daughter. My daughter, but which one? Katie. I'm sure Katie was cleaning out some of her stuff. She has so many rocks, and she probably found these long forgotten that she used to have and decided she would dispose of them in one of my flower beds. So there they are. They look real pretty right now, but they'll eventually be covered up with stuff probably. That's even a bead she's left or a finding or something. I'm gonna take that one with me and I guess I'll leave the others. There's a pretty marble. That's Katie though. It's got Katie written all over it. Right here, I see something else really exciting. If I move some of this stuff right down in there, those are nasturtium seeds. So I've never had a nasturtium reseed itself, but I'm gonna leave those and we'll see what happens. Maybe next spring, they'll come out on their own. I think I'm gonna cover them up with a maybe a little bit of dirt and leaves. Give them a little protection. I had nasturtiums all along this bed, so maybe, maybe that's a, that has happened all down through here, and maybe next year I'll have even more beautiful nasturtiums. Yeah. So we got a little bit of work done outside. Yep. It was great to get the uh, greenhouse cleaned out for sure. That was a mess. Yes, it was. And we do that every year. We let it, after the spring, when we get all of our plants out, we just kind of desert it and let it get overgrown. And Matt usually does keep it weed-eated, though, but I, this year, I, whatever reason, I was just worried about him being in there and it's so hot. And so he didn't, didn't weed-eat it as much or didn't weed-eat it the last time, I guess, is what happened. The last time we weed-eated it. Yeah, the last two or three times. Well, anyway, but it's cleaned out now. Yep. Got rid of a truckload of junk out of it. I don't know how we accumulated all that. I think Katie's taking her stuff up there and putting it in the greenhouse. Thank yeah, she's uh, she learned from the masters. She's kind of a hoarder like her mother. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> then she gets mad and cleans out, and then she takes it up there and puts it in the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. I think's what happened. Yeah, and then she comes up there and kind of makes us come down here and look at the basement and say, "Look what look what I've done! Look how clean it is!" <laughs> and it's all up there in the greenhouse. <laughs> I know. We're just teasing. It wasn't all Katie's. A lot of it was our junk that we had. <clears throat> But anyway, now we're in warming by the fire and got some hot chocolate going and it's dinner time. So I said, how about we have a uh, grilled cheese? So we're doing a grilled cheese to go with our, go with our hot chocolate. So that'll be good. A lot of people's been asking since our video on the croutons and Matt got his deer, at how many deer Matt had got this year, and he's harvested two deer. Hopefully there'll be a few more, <coughs> but for now, two, so. I hope so. I'd like to get one or two more. Yeah, but at least we've got those that meat in the freezer for mm -hmm. now, so, but, uh, well, we don't have the one he just killed in the freezer yet, but the other one. Yeah, yeah I don't know. We're going to... Are we going to can it, or are we going to freeze it? What are we going to do with it? I'd love to can it. Well, let's can it. Yeah, I'd like to can it. I can do it. Of course, um, I need some fresh tenderloin first. Yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah. Uh, we like ten deer tenderloin anytime, and then people will tell me that I'm saying it wrong. So what is it really? We call it tenderloin. Yeah, backstrap is what everybody calls it. But Officially. Uh, but tenderloin is, is what we call it, is the, and what lots of people call it. Yeah, yeah and this around here they do. But, yeah, in Appalachia. In technically, the tenderloin is the little smaller pieces that's on yeah. the underside of the spine inside. Yeah. Uh, but like lots of other things, we call things by the wrong names. Right. But it's okay. Anyway, we know what we're talking about. Yeah, and it's really good. Right. So, yeah. Hopefully, me and Matt can enjoy some of that here in a day or so. Yep. 
done or anything. That one is yours. That one over there is yours. I'm telling Matt which one is his because he likes to put sugar in his uh, grilled cheese. That's how he grew up with somebody sprinkling a little bit of sugar on <coughs> the cheese. I've heard a lot of other people say that too, but I did not grow up like that, so I don't usually put it on mine. It's because I'm sweet. Yeah. That's what makes me sweet. Yeah, that's what makes Matt sweet. You're sweet. Yeah. Help me clean out my flower bed. That's pretty sweet. <coughs> I'm just <laughs> doing as I was told. Yeah. <laughs> I'm smarter care. than I look. Yeah, you don't care about the flowers like I do, but... No, not as much, but yeah. if you like them, that's good enough. Yeah. I'll help you in them. While we were out in the greenhouse, we were hearing a bunch of crows calling in the distance, and I was telling Matt a funny story this week that my brother Steve told me. He was talking about crows and saying that he didn't know why, but for several years he had noticed that, uh, or many years, not just several, he had noticed that about once a year, there was a whole gang of crows, like they gathered up a whole whatever flock or whatever you call them, but many, many. Uh, he didn't know how many, and they would gather up back behind our house and back behind his house up, up the creek, what we call up the creek. And that one time him and Daddy, Pap, was talking about it, and they were, and Pap said he had noticed that too, and he didn't know exactly what they were doing and why they, why they just gathered up like that once a year. But Steve said uh, that Pap said, I don't know what they're doing. I reckon they're just, all I can figure is they're up there having church. <laughs> That's why <laughs> they all gathered up together. Um, Pap always had good little quips to say, didn't he, Matt? He did. Yeah. Smart man. This time of the year, I know we do, and I know other people do as well. Uh, the holidays really bring out your nostalgia, which I'm pretty nostalgic all the time and sentimental, but you start thinking about those people that are um, no longer with us or no longer with you and memories of them because they were always, if they were part of your life, they were typically part of your holiday festivities too, your Christmases and those kind of things. <coughs> uh, we still talk about how much Pap looked forward to uh, Matt's deer ham and how he, for several years, Matt, Matt would deep fry a turkey, how he loved that. Mm. I think we even got a picture of him eating a big leg or something. It was the whole carcass. The whole carcass that it was, was left. It was the first time I'd ever cooked yeah. it. And we, we used to go down to their house every Christmas morning. Was it Christmas morning? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we'd eat, and we had all the food on the table, and I sliced the turkey, and then he tasted a piece of it, and he liked it so good, he just kind of went back over to the stove where the carcass was, and he picked the thing up, and he carried it all over the house, <laughs> chewing on it, and talking about how good that yeah, was. There's a we, should, we should do that some more, because I like it yeah, better that way. It was good. It's the oil was so expensive, though. What was it, peanut oil? Is that what we used? Yeah. It was so expensive. Yeah, three gallons of it's $50 this it year. so expensive, yeah. That's probably why we quit doing it. Well, yeah, probably, but one time a year I would do it just because it's yeah, so good. It was really good. But I know lots of people do, like I said, we are thinking about PAP and past Christmases and your grandparents and people that are gone. And in our last video, our Christmas tree video, <coughs> uh, well, I don't know when you'll see this one, a recent video, the Christmas tree video, when he's putting up the Christmas tree. So many people commented that they really enjoyed it because they felt like that they were kind of there with us. They, they're invested in our family and been watching us, which we so appreciate. But that their family was, was gone, you know, and that they were kind of alone and that they were thankful that we let them join in. And that just really touched my heart. Mm. I can hardly even say that without crying, but that really touched my heart. My heart goes out to everyone that's uh, alone, and whether it's... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Matt dropped the lid, but my heart goes out to everyone that's alone, whether it is that their people have just all passed away and uh, they're the last one left, or, um, you know, whatever the situation is. And we're, I mean, honored that anyone would consider us family and enjoy spending time with us. Uh, that just really touches all of our hearts. And, and we welcome you to be, to for us to be your virtual family or to be your family, uh, you know, during the holidays or at any time, for that matter. But we were really touched by all those comments. I really appreciate them. 
Matt and I had a, um, plate, Matt, had a really good friend, and he was kind of like that. His, uh, he had a big family, but they were all gone, and he was the last one. And he'd tell us he was the last of the Mohicans, you know, that reference. Uh, and that's what he would, you know, he would t he would preface it like that when he would talk about being alone. Uh, so I know that changes happen and people pass away and families, you know, are no longer together or you move away or all those different things, but it's just parts of life, but those are the tough parts of life. But we certainly are glad to share our family with you. It smells good. Yeah. Grilled cheese and hot chocolate kind of go together. Oh, yeah. I wish I want first. I think the hot chocolate. Yeah, hot enough. It's hot. Yeah, it's good. It's hot. Good. That'll work. on a chilly day, isn't it? Yeah. By the fire, sitting by the fire. We need a pickle to go with it, though. I should have got a pickle. I just about run upstairs and get one. Go get one. I made the best pickles I've ever, best dill pickles that I've ever made. Oh, Matt's going to get us a table. He's going to be fancy. We'll get him a table. I don't need it. Go ahead. I just need a five gallon a bucket. Five gallon buckets. And you're in a pocket on a shirt. Mm -hmm. The best dill pickles, though, that I've ever made, and I've tried, like, up till this point, the best ones I'd ever made were fermented, just fermented, and we just kept them in the refrigerator. But the recipe come from Justin Metcalf at Metcalf Mills, so I will link to that. I'll try to I will find that video and link to it. Very, very simple, very easy, and they are delicious. Very good, yes. They're the best dill pickles I've ever made. They're super crunchy and have a really great flavor. Where they at? I'll go get them. They're in the refrigerator upstairs. There's we've about the Come sad keep. part is because I didn't know if we would like them. I only made three jars of them, so that was the sad part. And the day that I made them, actually, I think they would be even better than they are. You might want to slice them up, Matt. They're they're still whole, so if you wanted to slice one. But the day that I made them, uh, I remember the day, because Matt and Katie was going to go fishing, and they took off to go fishing. And I was just trying to, you know, in the summer, if you're a gardener, you have so much produce coming in. And I don't remember what I, if I was canning tomatoes that day or what, but then I was like, i got to take care of everything. And so I had some cucumbers that I had just been, they were really kind of getting past their prime. And I thought of Justin's recipe that I had watched like that week before, and I thought, well... Since I don't really even know if I like the pickle or how it'll turn out, I could just use those pickles to get rid of um, and those cucumbers to finish up and kind of clear them out so I'll be ready to pick cucumbers again the following day, you know. And I'll, I'll be able to, to get rid of them, get them out of my way, but then at the same time try his recipe. And if I don't like them, you know, it's okay and the cucumbers weren't that great anyway. But it turns out we loved them. And we made three jars, and we've already, I, I let them sit all that time because I wanted the flavors, you know, from really, really to get the, get the best they were going to be. And since we've opened them, we've ate one whole jar. So I'm going to, I will definitely run out before, before next summer and cucumber time. There's just something about a dill pickle that goes good with a grilled cheese. I just think they go so well together. They go really good with uh, hamburgers, of course, too, but grilled cheese, I always want pickles with them. Oh, Matt sliced them all up nice for us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. mm. They are good. Really crunchy. And I think they'd be even crunchier if my cucumbers had been fresher. Mm -hmm. 
but even just like they are, they're by far the best dill pickles I've ever made. You like them? Have I got stuff on my face? A little bit, yeah. I have a napkin. I guess I need to use it. Don't you think dill pickles go with grilled cheese? Dill pickles go with everything. Mm. I love pickles. Mm -hmm. I do too, and the deal ones, it seems like, I mean, I know for me, I've always chased that. If you eat them in a restaurant or something, of course they're store-bought, or well not always, but mostly, you think of the store-bought dill pickle that has that real crunch and the real strong flavor. Mm -hmm. That's what I was always chasing, and most of the time mine would be, it just wouldn't be that crunchy, and the flavor wouldn't be that bright either. The closest, though, I come was the past couple of years I've fermented the ones, and mm -hmm. we just leave them. We're lucky that we have two refrigerators, so I have a big gallon jar, and then we would just leave them down here in the spare refrigerator, and then just get them as we needed, carry them up and down, or get out a few, or whatever. And those were good, but they weren't this good, and these are easier. These are excellent. Mm -hmm. I'm getting hungry too. You'd come I'm, unfed? Yeah. I'm always hungry. Mm -hmm. That's a mountain term, I guess. Coming unfed. Mm -hmm. Way to say it. Instead of just saying you're hungry, say I've come unfed. Of course, when you come unfed, it's when you're really hungry. What most people would call hangry, when you're just yeah. about to get mad about it. Mm hmm. Time goes by so fast, it seems like I'm thinking how wonderful we got that greenhouse cleaned out. But it really, really won't be that long till we'll be out there starting the, I mean, starting the tomatoes and stuff before you know it. And I'll have to go on the dough patrol. I'm going to have to build like a gigantic fence or something. Getting hot. Yeah. Choke it down a little. I turned it up. Took that stuff. Mm -hmm. Stove does good. Does good. After our last video about the wood stove, a lot of people ask, well, how did they, which I understand, and we didn't explain it very well, it's our fault. They were asking, well, I don't really understand, how is it in your basement? It heats your whole house. <clears throat> but it's because our basement is not finished. So as the heat rises, there's there's no insulation or anything. There's just floor. Yeah, it just goes through so the floor. So it just goes through the floor into the upstairs. Mm -hmm. So it's that our house is actually not exactly the way it should be. Or our basement's just not finished, I well, guess is how you'd not, say it. So that allows the heat, though, to rise easily and go up, go up to the upstairs. Well, you're not required to insulate the floor on a basement. Here. Uh, just because it's a, <clears throat> basically a rainforest here. And the same with a crawl space. Mm -hmm. You're not as long as the as long as the outer walls are either insulated by the ground itself or if you have an open wall and we do have insulation in that frame block and that's all it's required mm -hmm. and, and it, it works okay is it still like that or yeah. is it just like that when we were still no it's like still that? like that mm -hmm. so we can we can build a fire in this stove and we can keep it going for days and days and days if it's cold but if we build one and we've not had one in, in probably three hours, we can feel it upstairs, and then you can just keep the stove, keep laying the wood to it, and, and yeah. it'll heat the entire upstairs on its own. Yeah. As long as we keep, you yeah. know, don't 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 let it get low, don't let it run out or anything like that. We can keep it going for 
even when it's in the, the 20s outside, yeah. it will keep the house warm. The, the other heat never kicks on as long as this is running. Mm -hmm. And as in the back bedrooms, it will run you out. <laughs> right, and you have to open the window. Yeah. Well. I just like the idea of having it because you can heat with no power and you can cook with no power. Yeah. If you have to. Well. I mean, we do this. Just because well, we warm, enjoy it. It's a warmer heat, though, too. Oh, yeah. Gosh, Way yeah. Warmer. It's, a, it's, it's almost free, other than the, yeah. the, the labor of, of yeah. getting the wood and getting yeah. it in here. But, yeah. It's just way warmer. But you're not, you're not reliant on somebody else. Yeah. Way warmer. And you can heat water on it, and you can cook on it, and it will warm your house. I mean, it's mm -hmm. a... What's the old saying about it warms you three times right. when you cut the wood and chop the wood, and then when you actually build the fire? Right. But you got to enjoy fooling with wood heat, and we do. Yeah. I, I love wood heat. I like fooling with the wood, and I like building a fire, and I just enjoy it. And I like the heat that it puts out. And it's just a, you know, it's an older way of doing things, but I'm, of course, we enjoy all the old ways. Um, it's just something that I like, especially when I'm off and I'm not at work. I like, in the wintertime, I like to be the one to tend the fire and be sure it gets built and, and gets kept going and it's just a, mm -hmm. it's kind of a look back to the old ways and I enjoy it. Oh yeah, it's really nice. What did your grandma and grandpa heat with? In the later years, I'm, I think they had oil heat. Yeah. I mean, I think I can remember seeing the the fill pipes in the yard coming up out of the ground where they filled it. It was mm -hmm. a buried tank and they, that's where they, they filled it. I think that's what they had. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure way back, way back there they heated with wood oh, probably. Yeah, probably. Or probably coal. Yeah. I think I remember, I remember daddy saying when he was young, there'd be a truck come up through the cove and stop at all the houses and it was a dump truck and it had coal in it and he would sell little bunches of coal to every, any family that wanted it and they had a, a coal bin and that's what they heated with and then as time moved on and the coal got scarcer to get and people you know it wasn't as available here people kind of moved over to oil heat and kerosene heat and that sort of thing mm -hmm. I mean that was even back before I guess before the propane and we don't have access to natural gas here yeah but, a lot of a lot of the houses where I grew up heated with coal back in the old days. When you uh, used to work on houses in that area that you know, you talk about inside the walls, was that where you, the or was that from the mill, the little pieces of coal? It was both. There was uh, you get in the attics and work or in the basement and in the basement you could see they actually had chutes that come through the wall from the outside where when the coal truck came they would unload it and just run it down the chute and into, into the, either the crawl space or the basement, wherever their heater was. And uh, they would be, you know, it'd be little bits and pieces of coal and dust and stuff all over the place, black dust. But at one time, they fired that, that mill that was there in town was coal fired. Yeah. So we'd, we'd get in those attics and work, you know, pulling wire and doing, doing electrical work. And there would be a fine film of dust in every attic we was in, just black dust about a quarter inch thick. And it, it was, gosh, it was nasty. Mm. But it was from where it had settled from that mill all over the town. Yeah. And yeah. it had got all, all over everything. Yeah. It'd get your clothes dirty, it'd black your hands. Yeah. Uh, so I don't, I mean, I might be wrong, but I just don't ever recall nobody here saying that they heated with coal. Is it because the mill, that coal was it? accessible there because of the mill I and maybe it just wasn't here it wasn't practical to bring it I don't know I don't really know I think that and that could be it could be that once the mill switched over the coal became less accessible there and then people quit using yeah. it I don't know but I think I thought I heard daddy tell me one time that you know the guy that brought theirs had just had his own dump truck and he would drive all the way to West Virginia or somewhere and get a load oh, of, of yeah. coal and bring, bring it back it and back. sell it and that's how he made money. Well, maybe I just don't know any, I mean, maybe 
it was I mean, I've here never, too. And I've never heated with it and never was in a house that was heated with it. No. That was all gone before I came yeah. on. But I saw the remnants of it. Yeah. It was pretty I mean, it may have, People in Murphy may have, or in Cherokee County may have used it too, and I just don't know about it. But I just wondered if it was there because of the mill. I'm certain that it would heat really well. Mm -hmm. It'd just be kind of nasty. Yeah. I've read so many stories from people about where it is, where it's naturally occurring, where they did burn it and they would go out and pick it up, you know, in different places if they were lucky enough to have a, a seam on their land or where it had fallen off the coal carts. Right. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. There's one or two of those houses that um, we worked in that had been vacant for many, many years. And the guy that bought it had hired Dad and myself to rewire it, and was he was going to remodel it and rent it. And there was a couple of those houses that had the coal bins that were still half full of coal. Wow. And, you know, big chunks of coal. Yeah. The big as a cannon. Wow. Mm. Interesting. And it had been there for decades. Yeah. It was, it was interesting. Yeah. One of those houses, or maybe it was two different ones, but you got some treasures out of them when you were working. Mm -hmm. One of them was a shelf that we've got up there, like a handmade, really unique shelf. Uh, it was in Corey's room, and then when she got married and left, she left it here, so it'll be in my office if I ever get to make that an office. Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful. Yeah. And then um, somewhere you was at, I don't know if that was the same house, but you found that book of poetry. Yeah, it was in... Uh down in the crawl space, in the dirt, yeah. and I got it out, and it was handwritten. Oh, it's amazing. Katie still got it. Yeah, handwritten it, poetry, and it, and it was written in pencil, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, oh, beautiful. And it was a hardback. Beautiful uh, penmanship right. or, mark, or writing, handwriting. Yeah. And uh, Katie at that time was being a little poet herself. She's one of those people that can just, you just say, if, you, if I said, Katie, tell me something, make something rhyme about Matt's glasses. She could just spit something out, right. make up something. But at that time, she was really into poetry, so she was writing po poems all the time, and Matt found that and brought it back to her. And it was like from the 30s. Yeah, it was really old. Oh, it was, I mean, but there's no way of knowing who the, I don't mm -hmm. think it even had a name in it. I don't think it did. I don't remember. Yeah, but it was obviously, it was, it was like somebody had kept it, for years and years and years because you could kind of see the progression of their life where they were talking about kind of silly or not silly but trivial more children's stuff yeah. and then as they you know maybe teenage love and then adulthood you could see the whole progression really beautiful yeah. I mean really just amazing but that was a treasure Katie still got it I was found an old cross-cut saw blade under one of those houses too about seven feet six seven feet long Mm. And I brought it home, and I don't know what went with it. I've not seen it in a long time. I don't know. I have no clue. I just liked it because it's probably I probably in our junk here somewhere. <laughs> in our junk pile. Yeah. I just liked it because I knew, you know, at one time that thing had spent a lot of time in the woods, and it, you know, people had to work real hard to use those things. Yeah. And it wasn't, I wasn't going to use it, and actually the handle ends were broke off of it, but it was just the just center the section of the blade. Part. I remember it. I and it was, it I just, I like old stuff like that. Yeah. If you don't do anything with it, but you just, you know, get it and just every once in a while look at it and, and think back think like that, I think it's neat. It. Yeah. That's why I like these old axes and stuff so much, I guess. Yeah. You can go to the store and buy a brand new axe, but it's not the same. Yeah, it's neat to think about the history with all the, whether it's an axe or a, for me, a bowl or a dish or a pitcher or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, what you going to do the rest of the day? Go hunting. Go hunting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over to Corey's and help her with her Christmas decorating, so that's what I'm going to do. Have fun with that. Yeah. You sure you don't want to go? I go if you make no, me. No, I'm just teasing you. She's going to, her and Austin's going to put the tree up. I was just going to help her with some other stuff. Okay. And Katie's out gallivanting, so she's not here to go or 
to be over there in her in her dungeon working. She calls it her sweatshop. Mm -hmm. I don't know though. Sitting by this fire makes me want to go take a nap. I'm about to burn down. Are you? Yeah, I've got to get out of here. All right. I'm well, burning up. Matt's got to get out of here. So, and I guess I better get over to Corey's. We hope you enjoyed seeing us clean out our mess of a greenhouse. Looks like we need to clean out our mess of a basement, don't it? <laughs> but we've cleaned it out so yeah. many times it never lasts. And yeah. you just, finally, you're just like live in the chaos. And just, yeah, see how we do. Yeah, we just do. And it is, though, Matt's mom always takes up for us and says, now, wait a minute, you got to think about all the businesses that's run out of that basement. It's a laundry, my la our laundry. Uh, it's Katie's sweatshop, she calls it, but where she makes all her stuff. Corey makes all her soap down here, and then Matt's workbench over there, So, and the shipping station right in the middle, and the freezers, and the refrigerator. And the four-wheeler. And the four-wheeler. And the tools. And the tools. And, and all the, my hunting stuff. All the hunting stuff. Tree stand. All the cannon stuff. It's a cannon yeah. place. So it's a full basement, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah we need another one just like it. <laughs> need a warehouse. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, we do. It's all necessary stuff, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm sure there's some stuff that could leave. But like yeah. all my gardening like stuff. Most of mine. No, I am not say <laughs> yours, not most of yours. See, I've got those two sleds up there that was... Uh, That's vitally important to I've hang had on those to those. Sled, I think I had those sleds before we had Corey and Katie. You think they're that old? What would you be doing with them before the kids Do you remember born? the year that, the first year we was married, how much it snowed? And remember, we, we just constantly were sledding. Yeah, I don't think I've done as much of it as you did. Well, I did. I, just I loved it. And then uh, we sledded so much on my Uncle Ray's driveway that he got mad at us because it was not just me, it was a bunch of us. But because, and I don't blame him because we packed it down. We shouldn't have done that. Yeah, made it slick. Made it slick. And anyway, I bought those then. I think I bought them that winter. Yeah, I was right out there with all the little kids sledding. All those little kids now have kids of their own, they're all mm -hmm. grown. But that was the year that I. Really, that was the year I got pregnant with Corey and Katie. You remember that? It was like it just snowed and snowed and snowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And pretty much it ain't since then. Not much. <laughs> Not much. We're hoping for snow, but I'm always hoping for snow. Mm. Maybe this will be the year. I hope so. Yeah. So far it's not been. It actually sleeted a little bit this morning on me up there. Did it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was hunting this morning, yeah, it started. When I went out the door, I could hear it hitting the ground. Maybe it's priming the pump. Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> yeah. Now that it's fifty something degrees, yeah, yeah it's primed the pump. Yeah. So we hope you enjoy spending time with us, whether it's when we're out working in the garden, putting up the Christmas tree like we were recently, or cleaning out the greenhouse that should have been cleaned out like, you know, five months ago, six months ago or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're always grateful when you stop by and visit with us and help us celebrate Appalachia.